Hi there, welcome to lecture video number two uh, for the energy and photosynthesis unit. I'm going to begin by summarizing photosynthesis because if you do not have a general idea of what's going on, you're going to hear about the lecture today, which is mainly about l light reactions. You're going to be a little confused as to what's going on. So I'm going to summarize photosynthesis as a whole for you using this chart. You can fill this in. Um, this is a picture you have in the back of your notes. I would fill this in in the back of your notes right now so you have this overview. So let's begin. There's two parts of photosynthesis, light reactions, Calvin cycle. All right. Today's lecture is going to primarily focus on this first part here, and we're going to go into some detail on it, but let's get an idea of what photosynthesis is about. Photosynthesis light photo in order to synthesize, in order to make something. What is being primarily made in photosynthesis? We're going to keep referring to glucose or sugar as the main product. But the main product could be something else that's also organic, like a fatty acid or an amino acid. But we're going to constantly discuss sugar or glucose as the main product of photosynthesis. Because the chemical equation has sugar as the main product, we're going to keep it as that. So the whole goal of photo photosynthesis is to use light to synthesize to make sugar food okay some of the sugar goes into making cell walls some of it is stored most of it is stored as starch some of it goes into organisms needing it as energy to produce their own atp so this goes for cellular respiration to produce energy some gets made into cell walls but most is stored by the plant or the algae as starch so the whole goal photosynthesis to make sugar or glucose and that happens in the Calvin cycle, which is part two. Today, we're going to focus on the light reactions, the perverse part. The light reactions, this is the part of photosynthesis that, this is the photo part. This is the part that absorbs light. And that light gets eventually converted into a form of energy that the plant can use. In the light reactions, water is broken down and oxygen gas is released as a waste product. So the light reactions, water is broken down and oxygen is released as a waste product. Um, if you remember back to our last lecture, water gets converted into oxygen. Water loses its hydrogens or loses its electrons. So therefore, water is oxidized and converted into oxygen gas. Right? This takes place in the light reactions. There's two major products of the light reactions, ATP and NADPH. NADPH is a molecule. NADP is the molecule and it carries the hydrogens that are needed in the next part. So NADPH includes hydrogen ions and electrons that are coming from the light reactions. So the two major products that are made in the light reactions are ATP and NADPH. NADPH, I'll once again I'll repeat, includes hydrogen ions and electrons. These things are all needed in the Calvin cycle. And in the Calvin cycle, the plant can take in carbon dioxide from the air, along with these products here and go through some a bunch of steps it's a cycle and in that cycle of steps it can create sugar as the main product okay so the two major parts of photosynthesis light reactions calvin cycle during which part is water broken down or oxidized in this case that's the light reactions oxygen is also made in the light reactions light is needed for the light reactions and the major products needed in the calvin cycle that come from the light reactions atp NADPH, which includes hydrogen ions and electrons that are required later in the Calvin cycle to eventually produce sugar. So let's think logically here. Sugar has carbons in it. Well, where did those carbons come from? They came from right here, CO2. That C right there becomes those Cs right there in sugar. Um, sugar also, glucose, has hydrogens in it. Where did they come from? They come from all the way back here. Water supplies those hydrogens. They become NADPHs. These H's make their way into the Calvin cycle, and then they become right there, sugar. Sugar also has oxygens in it. These oxygens that are found in sugar are not the same as these oxygens, very different. These oxygens that are found in sugar came from carbon dioxide, the oxygens right there. All right. The oxygen waste gas that's made in the light reactions, these oxygens came from water when water was oxidized or broken down. So this is an overview. So we are going to now focus on the details of light reactions. I highly suggest watching this video many times. It's going to take you about three or four times of hearing this video before things really start to click. So I would absolutely watch this video multiple times. In class, when we're in school, this would take students about three or four days in class 
hearing it from me every day, multiple times before they actually start to have it click or become familiar. It's going to sound very detailed, very odd to you, but it will start to make sense with repetition. I promise that. So let's begin. The light reactions. This is the first part of photosynthesis. Okay. I'm going to skip ahead just to show you what we're eventually going to get to. This is the light reactions right here. There's a lot going on. So I'm going to break it into small sections. My first section goes over one of these things called a photosystem. There's photosystem two. There's photosystem one. Yes, I know they come in. The, you would hope photosystem one would come first, but they don't. Photosystem two and photosystem one. All right. Then I'm going to talk about this whole thing as a whole. And then I'm going to talk about this little section here. And then I'm going to connect everything. All right. So let's go back. First part of photosynthesis. Um, well, first off, let's discuss what a photosystem is. This is a this is a protein complex of chlorophyll and proteins. It's basically kind of like a battery. It, it's not a battery, but it's almost like a biological battery. How does this biological battery work? Well, this biological battery absorbs energy in the form of light. Um, what absorbs the light? Specifically, these green things. They're called chlorophyll. Okay, the chlorophyll absorbs the light and gets excited, which means it gets energized. So a photon of light comes in and energizes these electrons, sends a chain reaction all the way down these electrons. All right, so what's happening here? Well, this is a photosystem. Where is it found? It's found in one of those, I call them little poker chips. They're called thylakoids inside of the, inside of the chloroplast. There's little green chips. In one of those chips, there's a, the membrane is on the outside. So this is a protein complex found in the thylakoid membrane. So how does it work? Light comes in. It strikes the chlorophyll. The chlorophyll gets energized. Eventually, this chlorophyll here called chlorophyll A, there's a pair of chlorophyll A electrons in the center. This pair of chlorophyll A electrons, they get so energized that they actually lose their electron. Losing their electron means they get excited. So this pair of chlorophyll A electrons gets so energized, they get excited or they lose their electrons, they get oxidized, and their electrons get moved to a higher energy level and get picked up by what's called a primary electron acceptor. So a primary electron acceptor just picked up electrons. This thing gained electrons. Therefore, it was reduced. Chlorophyll A, these pair of chlorophyll A's, they lost their electrons. Therefore, they were oxidized. So oxidation, electrons being lost, primary electron acceptor, it accepted, it gained electrons. This was being reduced, all right? So there's two photosystems. Photosystem two comes first or seems as though it comes first, okay? So it gets confusing. So there's photosystem one and photosystem two. They look the same. They work the same. They have chlorophyll. They have chlorophyll A. They absorb photons of light the same. They both have a primary electron acceptor. Their electrons, for example, the chlorophyll A gets oxidized. The primary electron acceptor gets reduced. It's the same for both photosystems, okay? So this is what a photosystem looks like. It happens in the thylakoid membrane inside of the chloroplast. So what happens next? So here's what happens. Let's now, let's take this a step further. This is a photosystem. This is a photosystem. This is photosystem two. This is photosystem one. They technically both will be absorbing light at around the same time, but I'm going to teach it to you in a certain chronological order as it shows you here, one, two, three, four, five, and six, so that it makes more sense to you when, you, when you're looking at it. So even though photosystem two and photosystem one technically are probably taking place simultaneously, I'm going to teach it to you in an order where photosystem two happens first based off of this picture. All right, so let's begin. Number one, all right, it begins with light being absorbed by the chlorophyll. And I already went over this in the last slide. What light is being absorbed. Okay. Don't worry about this number here. That just is a wavelength of light. That doesn't mean anything that you, that's not going to be on your test in any way, shape, or form. So light is absorbed by chlorophyll. That's happening in step one. All right. And this is basically happening in the thylakoid membrane. Like I said earlier, the chlorophyll gets energized, energized. And another term for energized electrons is called excited electrons. So the electrons in the chlorophyll get energized. Then it gets to a pair of chlorophyll A electrons. And this pair of chlorophyll A electrons, like I said earlier, they get oxidized. They lose their electron to a primary electron acceptor. 
So number two here is a primary electron acceptor is accepting electrons. It is getting reduced. Number one is showing you the absorption of light by chlorophyll. So what happens? Well, this pair of chlorophyll A electrons down here, they lost their electrons to the primary electron acceptor. Electrons need to be replaced for this cycle to continue on. If electrons are not replaced here, then this process stops. So when an electron is removed, an electron has to replace it. So in order to replace the electrons from this chlorophyll A that were lost or oxidized, chlorophyll A needs to grab electrons from somewhere, and those electrons are taken from water. So water gives up its electrons to the chlorophyll A. So that is the main purpose of water in the light reactions. So you need to know this for your test. What is the main purpose of water in the light reactions? Well, water donates electrons to the pair of chlorophyll A in photosystem two, not photosystem one. There's no water over here. This is photosystem two. So the purpose of water is to donate electrons to the pair of chlorophyll A's that were oxidized, all right? When water donates electrons, it donates electrons, the electrons are now gone, water gets broken apart, oxygen forms, okay? So water is now oxidized. Water lost its electrons, the H's, excuse me, lost its electrons and formed oxygen. Hydrogen ions, H pluses, are also found. Well, these do not have electrons. That's why they have that positive there now. So the hydrogens here lost their electrons. They were oxidized. We formed oxygen gas in this process and hydrogen ions that will be used later. We'll talk about them shortly, all right? So what is the main purpose of water? To donate electrons to the pair of chlorophyll A's in photosystem two, all right, that have lost their electrons or were oxidized earlier. That is the main purpose of water. How is the oxygen made in the light reactions. It is made when water gets oxidized. Okay, so now let's think of this as an order of events. So energy is going, think of this as a transfer of energy. So these arrows are showing you a flow of energy and the energy is, is a flow of electrons, energized electrons. So the energized energy of these electrons goes through the chlorophylls, goes to the primary electron acceptor, and now we're here. So now it goes through what's called a, an electron transport chain. So this is a series, and these are enzymes built into the membrane here, this one and this one. And this is called a proton pump. I'll explain to you what that does in a second, All right? So this is a series of reactions that are enzyme controlled, and these reactions are a bunch of reduction and oxidation reactions. So step four is showing you what's called the electron transport chain. This is a series of reactions, and it's showing you that the electrons are at a higher energy than here, and as they go down, they're losing their energy, and they're going to a lower energy state when they get down here, okay? So it's just showing you electrons going through a series of processes called the electron transport chain. This process produces some energy, some ATP, that will be used, and I'll explain it to you later. When this process here has to do with pumping things. So this ATP here is used by the plant to pump or move things, all right? And I'll talk about that in a second when we talk about the big picture of light reactions. Once you get through four, four is the electron transport chain, and now you're back to photosystem one. Photosystem one works a lot like photosystem two, so let's talk about that. Light is absorbed by the chlorophyll, energy is absorbed, a pair of chlorophyll A's also get oxidized, and the electron goes up to a primary electron acceptor. Well, when this happens, this pair of chlorophyll A's, they need to replace their electrons, and their electrons here are replaced by the electrons that come down the electron transport chain. So unlike photosystem two, photosystem two replaced the chlorophyll A's electrons from water by oxidizing water. Photosystem one replaces chlorophyll A's electrons by electrons that come down the electron transport chain. Okay? Now photosystem one, final electron acceptor, donates its electrons to another enzyme, and that enzyme actually produces what's called NADPH, okay? NADPH is produced. Well, this NADPH, NADP is an electron acceptor or carrier, all right? So this is a, like a taxi for electrons. NADP carries electrons, and those electrons will be used later in the Calvin cycle. When NADP picks up electrons, it will get reduced because it gained electrons, and it gets turned into NADPH. This shows you that it has now accepted electrons, and it's showing you those electrons right there. So NADP plus picks up electrons and hydrogen ions and turns into NADPH, 
Now, NADPH is one of the main products of the light reactions. Okay, this is one of the main products. So let's go, let's go back over this process. Number one, light is absorbed, chlorophyll is energized, chlorophyll A gets oxidized, primary electron acceptor gets reduced. It gets it picks up electrons. Then those electrons are now passed along a chain called the electron transport chain. As it does this, it produces some ATP that I'm going to tell you in a little bit provides energy for pumping some H pluses, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Come down the electron transport chain, and those donate their electrons to photosystems one, their chlorophyll A electrons that were lost here, that were oxidized here. Those go up to a primary electron acceptor. That acceptor then transfers the electrons to another enzyme that facilitates a reaction that produces NADPH. NADPH is produced by NADP+, plus, the electron carrier, picking up hydrogen ions and electrons, forming NADPH. The oxygen gas that's produced here is released. It can transfer, it can go, since it's hydrophobic, it can go right through the membrane and be released to the air. All right? Here's another part. This is an interesting thing. This is called chemiosmosis and ATP. This is an enzyme that's found here. Let me go back and forward a step. So see this right here? This is the enzyme. This is the pump. I'm going to go over this with you in a second. But this is the enzyme right here. So I'm going to shift to this area and explain to you what's happening there. So in the thylakoid membrane and in the picture, it'll be to the right of the photosystems. You'll see this other protein that's sitting in there. This is an enzyme or another protein. It's called ATP synthase. This, this enzyme, its primary function, this protein's function is to make ATP, okay? It's to make ATP. This ATP is needed in the next part of photosynthesis. It's needed in the Calvin cycle. Calvin cycle needs the NADPH and this ATP that's made here. So how is the ATP made? Well, a bunch of hydrogen ions get built up in the thylakoid, inside of the thylakoid space. And these ions, they want to move. Things in nature diffuse. They want to move naturally from where there's a lot, in this case, to where there's a little over here. There's just one over here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on this side. So there's a lot here, a little here. This is high concentration. This is low concentration. These ions, if they build up on the inside of the thylakoid, they naturally want to diffuse through this protein and leave naturally. And they do that. As they leave through this protein, this protein has the ability to attach phosphates to ADPs that are floating around in the stroma, and it converts them into ATP. So once again, how is ATP made? The process is called chemiosmosis. So the chemical, or the H pluses, are doing osmosis and moving through this protein. They're diffusing through the protein from an area of high to low concentration. As these hydrogen ions move through this protein, they will actually help uncouple the production of ATP. So ADP, adenosine diphosphate, adds a phosphorus and produces ATP this way. This is called chemiosmosis. The enzyme is called ATP synthase. Now let's connect the entire process. Okay, let's connect the entire process. Here we go. Light strikes the chlorophyll. The chlorophyll, the electrons in the chlorophyll get energized, and it goes down here all the way down to this pair of chlorophyll A's. Pair of, pair of chlorophyll A's, they get energized, and they get oxidized, and they lose their electrons to the primary electron acceptor. What replaces those electrons that were oxidized and lost? Well, water gets oxidized itself and gets broken apart and forms oxygen gas here and hydrogen ions. These hydrogen ions start to build up inside of the thylakoid down here. As you can see, they're building up down here. So now water has donated electrons, so now this pair of chlorophyll A's are happy again. Now the electron is up here at a higher energy level with the primary electron acceptor, and it goes down what's called the electron transport chain, a series of reactions that take the energy from these molecules and they, they allow this pump, this proton pump. Hydrogens, ions that don't have an electron are called protons, in case you're wondering where that term came from. So H pluses, hydrogen ions, are also called protons. So this is called a proton pump. Where did the energy come from? It came from the electron transport chain. ATP was made in this electron transport chain that went into pumping hydrogens into the thylakoid. Why does this require energy in a pump? That's because things do not want to go from a low to a high concentration without energy. Okay, 
So things, in order to go from an area of low concentration to all this high concentration of H pluses, hydrogen ions, it needs a pump. It requires ATP to move these hydrogens from the stroma and into the thylakoid space inside of the, inside of the chloroplast. So now we got a buildup of all these H pluses down here, a lot of them. They come from the splitting of water, and they come from the pumping of more of them inside of the thylakoid. All right, we're going to come back to those in a second. So now we're down the electron transport chain, and now we're in photosystem two. Excuse me, photosystem one. We just finished photosystem two. Photosystem one works a lot like the same, just like photosystem two. Light energy is absorbed by the electrons. Chlorophyll A's get oxidized and lose their electrons to an acceptor, and they replace their electrons by the electrons that came down the electron transport chain. Then the primary electron acceptor dones the ele donates the electrons to another enzyme that facilitates the production of NADPH. This is NADPH is made because NADP plus, an organic electron carrier or acceptor, picks up electrons, those are the blue things, and hydrogen ions, and it forms NADPH. This is needed for the Calvin cycle. That's the first thing needed in the Calvin cycle. Now we have a buildup of H pluses or hydrogen ions in the thylakoid. They naturally want to leave. They want to diffuse. So hydrogen entering, that is not diffusion. That is called active transport. It requires ATP and a pump and energy to go from low to high. To go from high to low and leave this area, this does not require energy. This is called diffusion. So the H pluses that build up in this thylakoid space, they naturally want to diffuse out of this ATP synthase. And as they diffuse out, that allows this protein or this enzyme to connect phosphates to adenosine diphosphate, ADP, making ATP. The two products needed for the Calvin cycle are NADPH and ATP. NADPH includes the hydrogens and the electrons that will be needed later. And this is the ATP, the energy that will be needed in the next set of reactions. Here's another picture showing it to you. It's showing to you how the thylakoid membrane looks. All right, we're going to stop right there.